Big Mama Female Predators Explained The Yaocha society is essentially male-dominated, and naturally all the predators that we have ever watched in live-action films have been male. However, there have been many great female predators who have not only proven their mettle time and again, but have become elite-ranked predators and have led clans of their own, from the Valkyrie Predator and Sister Midnight to Machiko Noguchi and Yakita. There have been many elegant yet deadly female predators. However, one among them has a backstory that's tragic and a life story that's thrilling. Yes, we are talking about the star of this video, the Big Mama. This great female predator appeared first in the comic book titled Aliens vs. Predator, Deadliest of the Species, where she played a very significant role. After a tragic loss, she took help from a woman named Ash Parnell, but even several decades after Ash's death, she did not forget her friendship. Eventually, when she learned that Ash Parnell has died only in body, she began an epic journey where she faced monsters like a queen mother and abominations such as the White Hybrids. If that's not enough, she is known to have killed greats like Batman, Wolverine, and Cyclops. In this video, we will explore Big Mama's story arc from the 12-issue comic and tell you everything there is to know about this hulking beast with a motherly side. Let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Aliens vs. Predator, Deadliest of the Species The first issue of this lengthy but amazing comic begins with panels that seem as if someone painted chaos on pieces of paper. The first panel of the comic shows us an incomplete face of a blue-eyed, blonde-haired woman who seems to be in a state of fear because she's probably being hunted by someone or something. She then introduces herself as Karen Delacroix, the synthetic trophy wife of Lucien Delacroix, who himself was the top partner of Montcalm Delacroix et Psy. It must be evident by now that the comic is set in a futuristic Earth, but to prove the same, Karen explains that she and the others are present on a massive Skyliner, where people are celebrating the anniversary of Earth's liberation from a xenomorph infestation. Alien vs. Predator fans will know that this is in reference to the comics titled Alien Outbreak, which was the direct sequel to the 1986 film Aliens. Moving on, Karen runs everywhere she could in search of help, but nothing she sees feels real. She manages to get inside a ballroom and finds Lucien. She tells him about her ordeal, but Lucien's head falls off, revealing that he was, in fact, a mannequin. She gets submerged amidst a sea of people, but manages to escape, only to be brought down by her mannequin self. She falls down below, only to find herself in a strange room. However, stranger things are yet to happen to dear Karen. Initially, she tastes blood, but what comes next shocks her. Her skin starts to peel off, as it was a piece of cloth that she had been wearing. And the next thing we know, her entire skin comes out, revealing an entirely new body inside the skin. Karen was tired of the strange things that were happening to her, and wished she was dead. For a moment, she thought her wish was going to come true, when she saw a huge animalistic figure and felt the warmth of three laser beams on her forehead. Interestingly enough, the figure addressed Karen as Ash Parnell, a name that Karen had never heard before. Although Karen is not really aware of who or what the figure was, the reader knows that it was a predator. And if you have reached this point of the video, you know that this Yaocha is none other than Big Mama. Fortunately for Karen, these haunting images of bloody death disfigurement and violent pursuit come to an end when she wakes up from sleep, proving the fact that the entire sequence of events was a terrible nightmare. But why did Big Mama address Karen as Ash? Soon enough, Karen's stepson Willem takes Karen to the Skyliner's head doctor to find out more about Karen's latest behavioral chain. Now, one may think that nightmares are something very common to experience, but Karen was not a human. She was a synthetic whose psychological and physiological designs were supposed to be perfect. Nevertheless, the cause of her nightmare remains a mystery. Meanwhile, Karen's filthy rich husband insists the doctors to get her back to how she used to be, happy and carefree. But Karen was far from carefree, and she goes to the Skyliner's computer mainframe named Toy, which was more human in nature than manners than humans themselves. However, nothing really is black and white in the AVP world. While Karen was fighting her personal demons, there was something else that was haunting two others. Tommy and Maria discussed the strange signals that Maria picked up not long ago. And although the signal was too strong, it was extremely short-lived, and Maria believed that it came from an alien ship of some kind, which had camouflage abilities, and what worried her more was the fact that this ship did not just hide from waves, 
but also optical instruments. It was not before long that Maria's fears came to life, and the Skyliner was attacked by an unseen force that ripped the skull of one man and skinned another woman. However, what worries everyone the most is that Karen is abducted from the location, and Maria and Tommy are called in based on suspicion. But where did Karen go? Well, Big Mama abducted her and brought her into the midst of dense forests, and there lay Karen bound to a tree and staring at Big Mama, who once again called her Ash Parnell. Oh, and by the way, since Karen was created to please the old hog Lucian, she could change her appearance with the help of Toy, and by now, she was a black-haired woman with Eurasian physiology. I'll bet she was as hot as she initially was. Karen's safe and privileged world had come to a standstill, and she probably thought that this was a fate far worse than death. The second issue begins with Karen still with her alien abductor. She is back on Earth, the Earth which is now bereft of humans. Those who were rich and powerful enough managed to live on the Skyliner, and all those xenomorphs have more or less been eliminated, the threat still exists. However, Big Mama does not care about them. Karen does all she can to get free from her abductor, but she knows that she is no match for Big Mama's might. I mean, the Yocha had slain a corporate bodyguard and ex-colonial marine, Mitchell Lassiter, and had taken his skull as a trophy. She makes all the promises that she could imagine, but her captor does not seem to understand a word, and only says the word Ash Parnell as a reply to Karen's multiple requests and pleadings. Back on the Skyliner, Tommy and Maria are being interrogated by Willem and Salazar, the corporate chief of security. It turns out that Maria had filed a sighting report, but since she could not trace the signal's origin point, she had to call it a ghost sighting, but Miss Salazar was not pleased and threw them in detention, believing that a few days in a dark cell will make them reveal anything else that they had been hiding. While Willem and Salazar were trying their best to find Karen, Lucian himself came to them. It was now revealed that Tommy and Maria were ex-defense who specialized in long-range combat missions, but were later deemed as ultimate hazard personnel. Lucian was going to do everything in his capacity to find his dear trophy wife, and as a last-ditch resort, he asked Tommy and Maria to help. While they agreed to help Lucian, Tommy was frank enough to Lucian and said, But I have to tell you, senor, the odds are your lady is already dead. Back on Earth, Karen finds herself alone for a moment and watches Big Mama's combi stick turned into a flag with a dead lady's skin and Mitchell's head at its top. She resolves to not bear witness to such horrifying sights or to wait to meet the same fate. She picks up a military-grade pulse rifle and escapes in the middle of the night. While making camp atop a tree, an epiphany strikes her. She had just field stripped and cleaned a professional weapon, something that was impossible for a trophy wife designed to please an old man. She wonders how she was able to do that, but finds no answers, not yet at least. Having said that, Karen had lived all her years like a stupid girl and told herself that this was all a part of some virtual reality created by Toy at the behest of Lucian to take her mind off the things that she had been feeling lately. It's not before long that we see her swinging on vines like Tarzan and handling her gun like a professional. While she thought she was playing the little virtual reality game, she fell into the water and got bitten by jellyfish. Although Karen was in Big Mama's sight, the giant predator seemed to be searching for her. Karen realizes to everyone's surprise that Big Mama could indeed see but not the same way as humans. After realizing that Big Mama could only sense thermal radiation, she chose to climb up the waterfall to remain cool and out of sight. However, Big Mama manages to catch up to Karen, but things go berserk when they get ambushed by a party of xenomorphs. It was now that Big Mama showed who she really was and how powerful the female Yochas could be. She took down the xenomorphs one by one, and Karen helped the female predator, but then Karen happened to meet a boy who a facehugger had impregnated. Big Mama stuck her spear through this boy's chest, killing him. Karen lost her cool and proved how excellent a combatant she could be, knocking off Big Mama and pointing the lasers at Big Mama. Clearly, the second issue ended on a pretty exciting note. At the beginning of the third issue, Karen had Big Mama pinned down, but a colonial combat ship approached and started firing at the female predator. To her utter disbelief, she plunged herself into the jellyfish-infested water so that she could draw the attention of the ship away from Big Mama. Karen felt a sense of sympathy and relationship with the predator. However, from the ship came Tommy and Maria, who not only rescued Karen from her virtual reality, but also knocked Big Mama down. Karen is taken to her deluxe home in the space, and she still believes that her ordeals on Earth were a figment of a fictional reality. However, she continues to get haunted by her dreams about the Predator and Ash Parnell. 
She fails to figure out a relation between these things, and everything seems like another piece of a puzzle that she cannot solve. Having said that, she has come to learn that her dreams are not just dreams, and might be, as the comic issue's title, virtually real. Whatever doubt she had remaining got alleviated when she discovered Yochia belongings like weapons and a mask. Desperate to find answers, Karen decided to ambush the only person she knew for sure would know things. She waited on Salazar and, just at the right moment, attacked her left, right, and center. She couldn't believe herself when she knocked out the corporate head of security herself, but a knocked out woman is as good as a mute one, right? Karen now had no idea where Big Mama had been taken, but just then, she saw something in the helmet she was holding, a sort of signal that could lead her straight to Big Mama. On the other hand, Willem was conspiring with a third party to know everything there was about the Predator and its homeworld. We have to understand that Willem was in no way his father's son, and oftentimes people got the better of him. Unfortunately enough, this was happening even now. On the other hand, Karen changed her dress to wear appropriate clothes for combat. Lucky for her, she had found just the piece in Salazar's cupboard. Slowly and steadily, she found her way to the facility where Big Mama lay on an operating table. The tech guys may not have respected Karen, but they did respect the gun she was carrying, a weapon that could slash each of them in half in not more than a jiffy. However, Tommy and Maria freed Salazar, and she ordered her men to go after Karen. They managed to pin her down, but she had already freed Big Mama, who came to Karen's rescue. The two of them fought hordes of security personnel, killing some and injuring others. Both Salazar and Maria shot several rounds into Big Mama. She was definitely more than wounded, bleeding and in pain. Karen and the female predator soon found themselves near a small space shuttle. Karen was still unsure as to why she was helping Big Mama, but she knew that the female predator was not a foe, but a friend. Probably her only friend. Karen could not leave her friend to die in agony, so she helped her into the shuttle and they both took off. Back at the Skyliner, Lucian was more than angered to learn about what his wife had done. He ordered Tommy and Maria to bring back Karen at all costs and to leave no stone unturned. And on the flip side, Karen found herself walking towards Big Mama's mothership, still unsure about what's going to happen next, but then there was only one way to find out. Aboard the mothership, Karen found herself gasping for breath. She fainted but Big Mama put on a helmet on her face, and although Karen came to her senses, Big Mama was rendered unconscious. Karen had no idea what to do to help the fallen predator, but she found a uniform that belonged to Ash Parnell and started crying out loud for her. Ash did appear, but not in the way Karen expected her to. However, Karen managed to find a way to help Big Mama to heal. She then heads on to explore the huge ship to kill some time. I mean, what else could she possibly do? She was all alone there, and her only alien friend was unconscious, healing. It was not before long that Karen found herself going through the belongings of the real Ash Parnell, the photographs of her family, her combat weapons, etc. Interestingly enough, in an earlier panel, we saw the various trophies that Big Mama had acquired over the period of time. Among these were skulls of superheroes from both DC and Marvel, for instance. There was a skull of badass people like Batman, Wolverine, as well as Cyclops. Karen did not realize when she fell asleep, and as it happened, her sleep brought her back into the world of nightmares. This time around, they had expanded to another level altogether. She saw her encounter with a xenomorph, and how she had transformed into a hybrid between a xenomorph and a human. Karen woke up from her nightmare, shocked and scared. She told herself that it was just a dream, and had nothing to do with reality. But then again, her dreams in the past about Big Mama and Ash Parnell had come true. Meanwhile, Maria and Tommy, who were on the lookout for Karen, found themselves face to face with Salazar, who was fresh as a flower. So Salazar had gone through some serious burns in the previous issue, and the doctors had lost all hope. However, since she was a synthetic as well, she had an accelerated healing factor, and she is back on the hunt. By now, Karen has had enough of Ash Parnell and Big Mama. All she wants is out, and out she gets when she notices a space station called Samara with starship Ellen Ripley. Does that ring a bell? You have to agree, there are a lot of cameos in this particular issue. Nevertheless, she docks the Predator ship at the space station and goes inside. Not very surprisingly, the space station people are not good guys either. Karen is soon roofied. While they plan to rip her ship down to the last bit, they decide to sell Karen on the black market. Could you imagine the worth of someone with the same abilities as Karen? She would sell for a bomb. Karen was a trophy, and that too, the trophy of Lucien Delacroix, the most powerful man in known space. 
Naturally, she was going to have enhancements and features like no other, and her captors knew that. But before she could be sold into the market, her previous memories had to be erased. Her captors were trying to give her another genetic transformation while modifying and enhancing the core conditioning that already existed in her. But they were unaware of what her core conditioning was. It was not that of a trophy built to please others, but something much more ferocious. And there she was, Karen Delacroix, in all her might and glory. Meanwhile, the salvage team sent to the Predator mothership found themselves in a bit of a fix when they awakened Big Mama who had healed by now, and was going to do anything to find her Ash Parnell. Big Mama ripped through the men one by one. The drawings of each of these panels depicting the fight sequence between Big Mama and the humans are truly magnificent. From Big Mama mimicking the things said by the humans to her rage and wrath being unleashed upon them, everything has been drawn gloriously and only complements Big Mama's power and battle skills. I mean, one of the men fired an actual missile at Big Mama, but an experienced predator like her was not going to give up so easily was she? But unfortunately enough, Big Mama gets captured by a xenomorph queen, and the sixth issue of the comic ends on another exciting cliffhanger. But lucky for you, we have read all 12 issues and are here to help. So, as mentioned earlier, Tommy, Maria, and Salazar were hunting Karen and Big Mama. Their search almost came to an end, but not quite in the way they thought it would. Big Mama doesn't appear until the end of the eighth issue, where we see that apart from Big Mama and one human, even Maria is abducted by the xenomorph Queen Mother. Here, she helps us understand that the Queen's Hive has only one ovomorph, and it is very evident that the egg is nothing but a royal ovomorph, supposed to give birth to the royal facehugger, and ultimately, a queen. It is not before long that Karen finds her way into the hive, and learns that the situation at hand is a troubling one, and that there could be no escape without a loss of life. Karen threatens to destroy the royal ovomorph, but the queen threatens to kill her friends. Karen understands the gravity of the situation and retracts a bit. Big Mama pleads to Karen to move away, stay out of reach till the cavalry comes. Karen tells her that that way everyone would die, and asks Big Mama if her life was worth that much. Big Mama replies, a fair exchange. Clearly, Big Mama held more value to Karen's life than Karen herself, a true friend indeed. Karen's argument is that if she was a royal host, the queen would have less reason to hunt them, and all the reason to be their protector. After saying these last few words, she gracefully picks up the royal facehugger and places it upon her face, letting herself get impregnated. Now, it is important to note that this was one of the very few instances where a human has willfully and in complete consciousness allowed a facehugger to get attached. In the next issue, we find Big Mama and the humans fighting for each other's lives, while Karen is cocooned inside the hive by the queen. She contemplates several things that have happened to her these past few days, but contemplation is not going to help her condition, is it? In a last-ditch attempt to change the status quo, she flicks her body and manages to break free of her cocoon. She comes outside the hive only to find Big Mama in trouble, and comes between the human gunfire and her Big Mama. She convinces her human friends as well as Big Mama that the only way that they would get to leave the place was by working together. Big Mama was clearly reluctant to the idea of working with Karen, who had been face-hugged. However, she ultimately agreed. As the events unfolded, it is revealed that Karen was Ash Parnell in her former life, an extremely smart and able woman who was behind the creation of Toy, the super-intelligent computer that served Lucien. Nevertheless, Salazar, Karen, Big Mama, the Queen Mother, and a few survivors from the space station find themselves in Big Mama's ship. But now, the fight was not against each other. It was for justice. Karen, in her old life as Ash, was betrayed by her lover and a colleague, the same man who was manhandling Willem. But then, where does Big Mama fit into all this? Well, several decades ago, Big Mama's children were kidnapped by the bad guys, and Ash Parnell helped Big Mama in the quest of finding the young predators. However, they could never find the children, and they eventually had to escape. Years later, when Lucien made Karen in the spitting image of Ash, the woman he once loved, Big Mama came to find her. Nevertheless, Coming back to the present time, it was one of those rare instances when a xenomorph, a predator, and humans came together to fight for a common cause, but how were they going to do it? Well, 
All the humans present inside the ship were excellent combat fighters, but they had to become more than they were. They had to ace the Yocha way of fighting if they had to get any closer to victory against what lay ahead. Karen and Big Mama trained the men and women present aboard for an ultimate showdown, but time was running out for Karen, who still had the royal embryo inside her, and it could have come out of her, bursting her chest just any moment now. Nevertheless, they complete their training and reach the Skyliner, the place where it all began the place which housed all kinds of evil. Upon reaching Toy, everyone was shocked to their cores. Toy had built a new race of xenomorph hybrids. The white hybrids were a mix of all three species. Like humans, they were persistent, intelligent, curious, hardworking, and extremely cunning. While the xenomorph DNA made them savagely fierce, cruel, and violent creatures who spit acidic blood, they reproduced by literally bursting some unfortunate being's chest. At the same time, the white hybrids got their animalistic and analytical predatory instinct from the predators. Naturally, an all-out battle broke out between the three species and the white hybrids who would have become the dominant species on Earth had they not been checked at an early stage. But they were a force to reckon with, and it seemed that the battle was lost. Things went against the good side further when Karen's chestburster came out killing her. Having said that, it seemed that Karen somehow wanted it to happen sooner than later. Amidst all these things happening, the chestburster that emerged from Karen turned into an extremely different kind of hybrid, one that saw Karen as its mother. Furthermore, there was a larger threat looming by now, in the form of the white hybrid king, who spoke in the voice of Willem Delacroix, because the first white hybrid facehugger was implanted on Willem's face at Toy's behest. Toy had realized the potential of his powers and abilities, and till the time humans remained, his programming would have forced him to follow orders. Therefore, he devised an elaborate scheme using humans to eliminate humans by creating the white hybrids. However, Toy's plans were far from coming true. As it happens, the Queen Mother was abducted by the White Hybrid and impregnated with a royal White Hybrid chestburster. However, the Queen managed to escape her confines and reached the battle zone. She realized that the only way her own offspring lived was through the death of the White Hybrid kin. So just when the chestburster was about to erupt from her body, she held the white hybrid king close. As the chestburster did its little thing, it killed both the king and the queen. And immediately after, this new chestburster was killed off before it could mature. As for Big Mama's children, they were found in stasis as if they were kidnapped only yesterday. Interestingly enough, Karen did die, but from her body, Ash Parnell came to life in body and spirit. This could happen because Toy had created Karen as an elite specimen, a human clone that could do much more than any other being. In the end, we see Big Mama, Ash Parnell, and the Xenomorph born out of Karen together. However, Maria, Tommy, and Salazar are still on the hunt, referring to Ash Parnell as the Renegade. So you see, Big Mama was not your regular Yocha who hunted because it was her way of life. She was a different beast entirely who was more ferocious because she was motivated by a personal cause. A cause that was deep rooted in her motherly nature. And we know very well how ferocious mothers can get when it comes to protecting their young. She fought several foes in her life and could have been an elite predator. Despite her motherly instincts towards Karen, Big Mama doesn't have any feminine traits like breasts and looks very much like any other male Yaucha. Furthermore, she used several weapons typical to a Yaucha, but she also used several human weapons such as an M41A pulse rifle. Now that the Predator franchise has hit the screens once again, it is my heart's deep desire to see Big Mama or at least one female Predator on the screen. Speaking of female predators, you may want to check out our video titled Great Crazy Brutal But Elegant Female Yochas, explained in detail. We'll leave a link in the description. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.